On Thanksgiving, we spoke with tenants who have been displaced for months from the Concord Hills apartments in Hartford. They are currently living in their temporary housing at the Candlewood Suites. One resident gave us an exclusive look into his temporary room and he showed us the difficult conditions that he's living in. There's not enough place, space to put the stuff that you need. So it's like you either go searching for your clothes every day or just leave them in the, in the place where you can find them if you need to leave in a hurry. A home away from home, cramped and run down. Dave Richardson is among those who have been displaced from the burned out Concord Hills apartments in Hartford. Fox 61 got a look inside his temporary home, a place he's been living for months. I'm on a social SSI disability. I make $17.49 a month, paying eight, um, $850 is more than paying um, 55, almost 60% of my income. If I was to go to a, a bedroom, a one bedroom apartment, it's, it's 1200 I would be paying almost 75% or higher of my income. Finally, after months of fighting and worrying about their future in temporary housing, an answer came from the city. We're, we're going to uh, allow an additional 30 days for tenants uh, through January 10th to be in temporary housing but it is time for everyone to make use of the resources that we have already provided. And Concord Hills tenants have been hoping this would come. I'm overwhelmed. Um, I'm happy that we got an extension, but still I don't know where I'm gonna go if those apartments are not ready. The mayor has suggested more affordable apartments for these people to seek out, but the concern is they aren't safe. The ones that he offered are in drug infested, crime ridden neighborhoods, places that no, that no one really wants to live in. Monday afternoon, Mayor Arulampalam made it clear to tenants. But we want to make sure that by January 10th, every tenant has a plan to move into permanent housing that doesn't include Sherbrooke. Many of the tenants we spoke with say they'll be happy about the extension once they receive a letter that the extension is really granted. In Hartford, Kate Pattyfoot, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Kay, thank you. Turning to the weather now, uh, now it's going to be a, a cold night ahead, in fact, a cold week ahead. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank now for our first look at the forecast, Rach. Yeah, we have temperatures tumbling back into the teens to around 20 degrees. And to go along with that cooler theme, we also have some rain and snow to tell you about for Wednesday night into Thursday morning. And this could cause a few issues for the Thursday morning commute, especially in the higher elevations, which we'll talk more about in just a little bit. Right now, we're looking at temperatures in the 20s to right around 30 degrees, mid 30s for the New Haven area. And you're seeing the lake effect snow machine has been turned on and it is cranking. There is a chance we could get a snow shower to sneak into Connecticut later tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, but temperatures should be above freezing when that happens. Tonight we're looking at temperatures in the upper teens to right around 20 as we head towards daybreak. Lots of sunshine on your way out the door. High temperatures will be right around 40 degrees and we'll see increasing clouds later in the day and then we'll see between 4 and about 8 p.m. There could be a scattered snow shower out there. Then then we're keeping a closer eye on Wednesday night into Thursday with some rain and snow developing after nine o'clock. So this is not impacting the Wednesday evening commute, but there could be a few slippery spots inland, especially in the higher elevations overnight Wednesday and into Thursday morning. Most of this activity should be pretty light in nature and it's all elevation dependent again along the shoreline, southeastern Connecticut, mainly just talking about rain. But the higher up you go, the snowier it gets. We'll talk more about it. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, grab your popcorn and get ready for this story. Some Connecticut moviegoers are sharing their sticky theater experience on social media. They say what was supposed to be a fun night at the movies turned into a real-life horror film. Fox 61's Matt Karen has details from Danbury. Popular movies like Moana, Gladiator, and Wicked are once again filling movie theater parking lots like this one, which were once largely abandoned. This influx of patrons and a lack of staff to serve them has stressed AMC to the max. This theater in particular is embarrassing. The IMAX in Danbury failed to meet minimum expectations. I didn't um, expect to see what I saw. For these patrons, plans for a relaxing, fun-filled night at the movies 
If you glanced in there, it was disgusting. Was anything but. Piled high with trash. AMC Danbury 16 Theater, now showing a real life horror flick. The floor was sticky and there was popcorn and wrappers all over the seats. For Adam Dean, the experience reaffirmed why he created his theater at home. You can take care of yourself and sit at home with your family and have a much cleaner environment. Some big box office titles graced the screen post Thanksgiving, Gladiator, Moana. But on this day, the buzz wasn't about Wicked, but rather the wicked, gross conditions of the viewing venue. To the point of where there was another woman in the bathroom that yelled to me through her stall, isn't this disgusting in here? It's an experience Stacey Ambrose pays a premium for. Now she's reconsidering. I actually am an AMC A-list member, so I pay $25 a month to go and see movies there, but it's really not the greatest of experiences. No food, clogged sinks, overflowing trash, unattended spills, sticky surfaces, even a leaky roof. There was no caution tape. It was water all over the floor, just a rag thrown on the, on the floor. The conditions captured the attention of Danbury's former mayor, Mark Bowden. He posted his negative experience on social media. I think the Board of Health should get involved. In search of answers, Fox 61 went inside. We noticed a health department inspection in progress. The inspector told us they conducted three recent visits. In a statement, they said they have passed today's inspection and are currently working on a few recommendations. AMC Corporate added, based on guest photos and accounts, we fell short of providing our guests a proper experience as the theater experienced its second biggest weekend attendance of all time. We're in close contact with the theater team and an action plan has been put into place. AMC didn't specify what that action plan entails, but they went on to say they pride themselves on a clean, comfortable movie going experience. One other thing to note, the people we talked to want to mention, this is not the fault to the staff who work inside. These are young adults making minimum wage, doing the best they can, overworked and understaffed. Reporting in Danbury, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, we have an update now from New Haven Police. They've just released the name of the victim in a deadly shooting. Police say 25 year old Christopher Santana was shot at the intersection of George Street and Winthrop Avenue just before 3 30 this afternoon. Police say Santana and a friend were approached by two men wearing masks when one of them shot Santana and ran away. Police have not identified a motive but believe Santana and the gunman likely knew each other. It looks like uh... You know, he came here to meet somebody, something happened, and he was shot in the chest. Whether that was an attempted robbery or some kind of dispute, we're looking into that now. All right now, police are still searching for whoever fired that gun. As we get new information, we'll be sure to pass it along to you on air, online, and on the Fox 61 News app. Well, tomorrow, former Governor Jody Rell will be laid to rest. She died two weeks ago following a brief illness. According to her family, she was 78 years old. From 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow, Governor Rell will lie in state at the Capitol building here in Hartford. Fox 61 political reporter Emma Wolfhorst has the details. As Connecticut prepares to say goodbye to Governor Jody Rell, elected officials and lawmakers across the country have been expressing their gratitude for her and her time in office. Remember somebody who came in at a complicated time and they're right at the ship? Somebody who represented the very best values of the state of Connecticut and somebody who was a really good person. Whether they knew her personally or only knew of her, people share this sense of former Governor Rell's compassion, candor and ideas all still live in the legislative chambers today. She was a person who put people over politics. Rell spent seven years as governor and nearly three decades in public service in Connecticut kid. Some of her many accomplishments include massive education reform, supporting abortion, and STEM research policy. While she didn't take the step toward gay marriage, Rell did sign the bill making Connecticut the first state to certify same-sex civil unions. She also focused on stopping out-of-state prison practices and changing Connecticut's tax formulas and spending habits, leaving behind many fiscal blueprints which are still called on today. 
clean campaigns, expanding daycare, expanding Medicaid, always thinking about families. Unlimited debate, the tradition we have, the bipartisanship, it still exists today in 2024 in Connecticut. So we sort of stand on the people that came before us and the legacy they left. And she was able to be powerful but civil. And that's a really good good lesson, I think, in politics. Roe was only the second woman governor in Connecticut. She led the state from 2004 to 2011. She was also the state's last Republican governor. Roe spent the rest of her life promoting work across the aisle and inspiring political involvement, especially through the University of Hartford's M. Jody Rell Center for Public Service. The office was marred with scandal and she had to come in and really sort of clean it up. And she created the citizens election program, took lobbyist money and special interest money out of politics in the state of Connecticut. That was a huge legacy that we still see to this day. I love what she stood for, but I love her as a human being as a person. Reporting in Hartford, Emma Wolforst, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Emma, thank you. At 2.30 p.m. tomorrow, there will be a mass of Christian burial at the Cathedral of St. Joseph in Hartford. A private interment ceremony will be held later at the Connecticut State Veterans Cemetery in Middletown, where Rail will be buried alongside her husband, Lou. Fox 61 will have team coverage of the funeral services tomorrow on air and online. And also an important note tonight, Farmington Avenue from Sigourney Street and Broad Street will be closed to traffic tomorrow between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Because of the funeral procession, police are expecting heavy traffic in that area.